Welcome back to Nick Lange's Comic Corner, Classics, Class, Non-Classics. This is episode number 254, and Double Shot, number 186. It was a typo in the last video, um, where it came up with, like, if it reads 185, if it reads 186, it's actually 185, okay? Just wanted to get that out of the way. First up, Superman, The Golden Age, Volume 1, Collecting Action Comics, 1 to 19. These are just the Superman stories from those issues. Superman, Volume 1, Issues 1 through 3, and New York's World's Fair Comics and 1. That's a Superman story. Now, not much to talk about with this. I do recommend reading this book. Uh, th there is some first appearances here. I mean, in the very first issue alone of Action Comics, he's the first appearance of not only Superman himself, but also Krypton. You see it briefly before it's destroyed. Lois Lane, um, Daily Star. Not Daily Planet, Daily Star. This is before it became Daily Planet. This is back in the late 30s. Uh, and George Taylor. Uh, he was Perry White's predecessor as as as, uh, as uh, Clark's boss. Before two. Um, the only first appearance you have in here is they had the first appearance of Jimmy Olsen and the Ultra Humanite, who, um, let's see, where is it? Oh, and uh, the writing is done by... Uh, Jerry Siegel and the artist is done by Joe Schuster. And Michael Cho is the cover artist. Let's see, where is it? Uh, let's see. Hmm. Two oh nine. Now uh, the Ultra Humanite does make his first appearance here. Ooh, hold on, I just passed him. If you want to know what he looks like in his debut appearance, he looks like this. A bald scientist. Now, he preceded Lex Luthor by at least a year. This guy here, this is supposed to be Ultra Humanite in his human form. Um, yeah, this is a sample of the artwork that uh, Schuster did uh, back, in the, back in the... from the late 30s to... I think it was... I think him and Schuster... Uh, Simon and Schuster, uh, Joe Siegel and Joe, uh, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, um, they were doing Superman up until, I think, the early 50s. Yeah. But all the issues you're really going to mean, there's a lot of really weird ideas, basically, that Superman has, and you're like, he takes on gamblers, he, he, um, let's see, he also takes on reckless drivers, he... Stops corruption. There's all this other stuff. Now, some of the stuff that was incorporated that was here that was known for Superman during the Golden Age was incorporated a little bit into New 52 Superman, which a lot of people didn't like that very much because people were, don't like the whole dark Superman. This wasn't like an edgy Superman. Oh, and in case you're wondering, in case you ask, did he ever fly? Now, the obvious answer is no. He was leaping. Yes. That was one of the things he was known for doing. Now, he didn't start doing the whole flying thing until the late 1940s. Uh, it was right after the uh, the original Superman cartoon that was on back in the 40s. Last 60 episodes, you can find it on DVD someplace. Uh, that cartoon introduced the concept of flying to Superman, but he kind of stole that from Captain Marvel. Yeah, because... And, uh, in case you're wondering, now you're probably thinking, though, that's Superman? That looks something like Superman. You're probably familiar with the uh, different S. Hang on a second. Um, you're probably familiar with... Here it is. You're probably familiar with Superman... With this S right here. Yeah. Even though this is black Superman, but I just want to use it as an example. You're probably familiar with Superman using this S. But, um... But, yeah. This is the Golden Age Superman's costume. A costume he would wear... For about a decade. Now, they did... Now, all they, the only changes they made to his outfit over the years is they... Uh, changed the style of the S. And the underwear and the tights basically shrunk down. Like, they got rid of the... They got rid of this part here, the ones on the on the legs. They got rid of that. Though now that the underwear is gone, but um, essentially the costume, the 
the design of the costume itself hasn't really changed all that much over the years. The only addition they ever made to the costume when they came to reboot, besides get rid of the underwear, was they gave him a stupid collar. But this is the Golden Age suit, man. And the issues in here are so good. And here's the thing. Despite the fact you have issues that were also reprinted in the um, uh, DC Archive books, which those cost $50. Do you know how much this book cost? This book cost $20. That's not a joke. This costs twenty dollars, so this should be pretty affordable for some people to buy this. If you're interested in getting into some or very early suitman, like the very first couple years of his of his when he was around, I do recommend this, and I give this book a ten out of ten. This book's really good. All right, next up, it is uh, a Civil War book. I've done one of these in a little while. It is a uh, Civil War Captain America slash Iron Man. This book contains Captain America, Volume 5, Issues 22-24, Winter Soldier, Winter Kills, Number 1, Iron Man, Volume 4, Number 13-14, Iron Man slash Captain America, Casualties War, Number 1, and Civil War to Confession, Number 1. Now, the writers. Uh, Bert Baker, Ever Baker, he writes the issues of Captain America, uh, The Winter Soldier, One Shot, and he writes, uh, I think he writes Civil War to Confession. Yeah, well, actually, Ben this writes that. Uh, Bird Baker just writes Winter Soldier and the Captain America issue. Um, the Casualties of War one shot, that's on my crystal gauge. Daniel Kanoff, I think, and, and Charles Kanoff, I think that's how you pronounce the guys' names. These guys were the regular writers of Iron Man after Warren Ellis finished up his first arc, the uh, Extremist arc. Th these guys are the writers of the book. Um, and that's it for, for the writers. Um, one thing I should know, um, let's see. Now, in the case of Civil War itself, like, some people tend to complain about during these big superhero events that you, they kill off a good number of superheroes. In actuality, um, if you read Civil War and love it, not only the main miniseries, but also all of its tie-ins, only one superhero actually dies, and that's Goliath. That's it. There's a few villains who die, and there's one supporting character of a character, which is uh, Happy Hogan, uh, in the pages of Iron Man. He dies. But otherwise, though, the death toll was really not that high for Civil War. I mean, I think probably the highest they probably got was probably just before the thing started, was back in Civil War number one. Now, during the actual event, death toll was very minimal at best. It was like... Almost like it's just how we get from a brief skirmish. I mean, you have one superhero and a handful of villains die, and of course, one supporting character for uh, a popular a popular superhero in the form of Happy Hogan dying. Um, that's really it over the course of Civil War. I mean, yes, the the, the event did open up very controversially with the uh, the destruction of Stanford by Nitro, which. Still to this very day, and this really ticks me off by Marvel, is the fact that no superhero. Only one superhero has actually gone after him. Actually, two. Um, Speedball went after him after he survived the destruction of Sanford. And Wolverine went after him, too. This is before he's like a decade before he died. Um, but has any other big heroes gone after him? Nope. No one ever has. And this kind of bugs me. And yes, Nitro did re reappear in the Starbrand Nightmask series. But what was they were brought before the World Court, for, uh, brought before the Supreme Court for uh, the mass murder he committed? Nope. It's like no one at Marvel basically want, wants this guy to be tried for the stuff he did back in Civil War Number One. I mean, no writer wants to write a story about that. If I want, if 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 I was a writer at Marvel, I would write it that Spider-Man went after him, captured him, put him in a containment unit, and bring him and drag his butt before the Supreme Court and have him try for the deaths of six hundred people. Yes. And in story, people blame the New Warriors for destruction of Sanford, even though it was Nitro's fault. I would say New Warriors are indirectly responsible, but not directly responsible. They should not be given all the blame. Heck, any comic book fan who, is, who knows these characters know that it's not the New Warriors' fault. It's the fault of Nitro. The guy is explosive here. This is the guy who killed Cap the original Captain Marvel back in the early 80s. And yet, he was never tried for that either. I mean, I think the only thing he's ever tried for was some bank robbery. He was tried for some minor crimes, but has he ever tried for any major crimes? Nope. 
that's my rant when it comes to Nitro. I think the guy should be, I think it should be at least a mini series of his trial because I would think that a trial of, for a character like him could easily, uh, a mini series featuring his trial could easily get a bunch of sales because I'm sure that a lot of people probably want to buy that like crazy. Who wouldn't want writing it? Maybe Bendis. I don't want Mark Millar to write it because I don't think he will write a good story. Uh, yeah, Mark Millar is a good writer, and he did write the original miniseries for Civil War. I know that the current Civil War 2 is written by um, Brian Michael Bendis. But I want anybody to do it. I mean, Ibra Baker could write it. He's not writing anything for Marvel right now. I mean, I wouldn't mind if he wrote it. I wouldn't mind if any other writer would write it. Uh, Bendis I not, would not currently because the guy's got too much on his plate. I mean, not only is he doing four ongoing series, he's also doing Civil War as well. So he's got five books to write, maybe six Blue Powers. But this is still pretty good, uh, especially for Civil War tie-ins. The, uh, the Casualties of War thing that's set during the war, and there's many nods to co there's many flashbacks to many famous stories. Sorry, I'm in the middle of your long talk. Okay. Um, like when, uh, Yellow Jacket slapped the Wasp, uh, at the start of the trial of, uh, the trial of Yellow Jacket storyline, very good storyline, highly recommend the trade. Um, there was the time when, during the Armor Wars, when Cap fought Iron Man for the first time. Yeah, there's many nods of continuity. It's like Christmas Gage is a humongous comic book fan, and he just referenced all that stuff. I mean... He even sh he sh showed flashbacks, he, even the artwork in that issue. That issue must have had a ton of different artists in it. Let's see. Casualties of War, the artwork is done by um, uh, Jeremy Hahn. I have got to give this guy credit. Let's see, where are you? Yeah, this guy does a great job drawing the flashbacks. I mean, here's Armor Wars. Let's see here. Uh, this is a flashback to Civil War number five, which had just happened at that point. Let's see what else we got here. We got some skirmishes they actually fought, and they're in, and they're in the ruins of Avengers Mansion. Why is the ruins? Because it's been ruins of Avengers Assemble. It doesn't get rebuilt until after uh, Siege. Uh, there's death of Gwen Stacy. Um, let's see. Uh, you have this particular thing. that That's from the pages of P.F.R. But that's drawn from a modern day perspective. Uh, you have a reference to um, the Captain and Nomad. Two previous identities that Steve Rogers had soon back in the 70s. It's a great issue to read. Heck, even a nod to Demon in the Bottle. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. There's the uh, slapping incident, which caused the marriage between uh, Hank Pym and Janet Von Dyne to basically end. Uh, there's murder. Uh, there's appearance by Cloak and Dagger in here. Yeah, it's a great one-shot. Heck, here's something from Operation Galactic Storm. Blackneck, when he killed the, um, oh, whatchamacallit, uh, Supreme Intelligence. There was the brief time uh, for about one issue of Avengers when... Uh, Janet Von Dyne and um, Tony Stark went out. They went out for a weekend. Um, you have a bunch of flashbacks. Great flashbacks, great depiction. But this artist does a great job just recreating classic moments over the course of Marvel Comics history. And it's a great one-shot to read. And I highly recommend getting the one-shot along with this trade. Um, all the issues in here are really good. Uh, the Captain America 7 7 focus on Shimmer and Carter. But despite that, it's still really good. Um, I give this book a 9 out of 10. I do highly recommend it, especially... I mean, the only reason why they released this tree is because of the Civil War movie. The movie itself was good. And this is good, too. Alright, that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode, which will be episode uh, 255 and double shot number 187. Until then, see you there. Bye.